So we're changing the clutch on the uh, XS11 special. Uh, ruined the gasket and I didn't, you know, I knew that was going to happen. I didn't order one. I'm going to use some RTV. If it leaks, I'll order a gasket and change it. So what? But let's get down to uh, the problem. It's been slipping. And uh, I suspected the springs, they were either broken or wore out. So there's a factory spring, and I looked up online, they said they should measure 42 millimeters. I went and got me a cheap caliper from Harbor Freight. We're at 41.3. If I check it where the spring isn't damaged or where it doesn't end, uh, I got 42. It says it's supposed to be 42. Great. But, new spring. 45.5 bottom line this is a cheap caliper and the new springs bigger I'm putting the new one in the old ones are either wore out or fatigued I'm just looking at the coils on them too could just be me but the one on the right looks like it's heavier got more to it so we're using those I was told uh, soak your friction plates so I am uh, same guy said don't use that oil again after you soak your friction plate. You're going to need to waste that oil. Oh, fuck that. I'll use that oil. I got pretty good light here, but you can see, maybe it's focused. There's a ring behind there. The ear of it was bent up on one side of the nut. Just take a punch and bend it back. It's really soft. You should be able to use one side of that probably three times. And chances are this bike isn't going to live for six clutches. So unless you totally mess it up, you'll be fine with one of those. Now to break it loose is kind of tricky because it just turns the engine when you try to turn on it. So <clears throat> I'm going to put the, uh, the brake pedal on temporarily. And I popped it into gear. Oops, I forgot I got to take that bolt out to get it on most of the way. There we go. I'm just gonna use that to try to hold the rear wheel while I turn this. Um, I don't have a very good video stand here. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Maybe I can even step on that with my foot. Well, crap. Breaker bar is not the angle I want. Hang on. Alright, I'm all configured. I'm just going to try to step on the brake here. And give it a turn. See if I can break it loose. Well, my rear wheel's not turning. I wonder what's going on. So I had to put it in high gear because it really wasn't turning the wheel fast enough to... I had to put turn it too much. I would have had to put a ratchet on it and fart around. So I put it in high gear. Now we're going to try it again. I also got rid of that extension. It was just too much to diddle with. So foot on the brake. See if I can brake or loose now. Coming up tight. There we go. Oh yeah. Easy. Easy peasy. There you go. That's the easiest way to break that loose. Alright. We got the plates out. Let's go over a couple more things. I haven't even checked it yet. You're gonna see before I've even checked. Turn my caliper back on, maybe. There we go. Got it on millimeter, by the way. Cause that's, everything's in metric on a Japanese bike. So let's just see what this is. I got around three millimeters. On the, on the old one. Let's check again. 3.3. Uh, just under 3, I think. I'm not doing the most accurate job here, but we're just trying to get an idea. Old compared to new. So, get one of these out of the, out of the oil here. Sorry, I ran out of storage on the uh, recording device here. But anyway, I checked them both. The new ones are 3.3. The old ones are closer to 2.8, so half a millimeter. Doesn't sound like much, 
but when they're only three big that's more than 10 percent that's like 15 almost 20 um, might be 20 I don't really need to do the math new ones are bigger those are what we're using the steel plates on the other hand well I was looking at the old ones and they had they looked more aggressive there was a lot more divots on them I see divots on this one but not like the old ones let's take a look at the old ones Here's another friction out of the way. All right, take a look at this. See uh, those divots? The other one has divots, but not that pronounced. I really feel like I want to use these old ones. I'm going to put the caliper on them just to check. You can't really see the divots at all in this. They're barely there. I'm going to check them with a caliper, and I'll have to flip a coin if one's bigger if the new ones are bigger but the old ones are more aggressive I'll just have to think about it and choose so while I was waiting for the plates to sit in the well I was uh, sanding the gasket off the outside here some emery paper and I noticed looks like an old man there just all cracked and fatigued a couple places and uh, I'm like, well, shit, that look, hairline cracks a leak, but outside looks fine. I'm going to try to buff this up while I got it off, too, one piece at a time. Anyway, uh, if I decide to change that <clears throat> gasket, if my RTV sealant leaks, then uh, maybe I'll order another one of those covers. All right, we went over, we went over those steel plates. And I never told you the result. I'm finished putting the bike back together. I'm just waiting for the sealant to dry before I put the oil in it. The plates measured the same. I mean, I saw 0.1 millimeter. That was just one try. Basically, they were no different. I put the old plates back in. I'm going to send the new plates back at $55. Get my money back. I don't need them. Uh, what else we got? So, uh, it was tricky getting the cover back on. I did it a little different putting all the plates together than the most people. I actually put half of my basket back on the bike and then had the plates on the other part of the basket and pushed them on that way. That seemed easier to me. I put two bolts back on with the springs, torqued it down with a torque wrench at 50 pounds the same way that I broke it loose, had it in gear, step on the brake, worked good. Uh, then. The hardest part about putting this cover on was mine has a kickstarter not all of them have that but uh, right here this dude so I had it on and then I looked at it's keyed for the kickstarter the kickstarter is stored temporarily on the bike it's got a little wing nut there hold it on you can pull it out but I, I saw that key and I was like shit that doesn't look like it's in the right spot I pulled the kickstarter off and put it on there it was pointed down that wouldn't have worked so what I had to do was take it back off and put the kickstarter on it, on that shaft, and basically wind up the spring inside of there until it was pointing pretty much straight up. And then I pushed it on, because once that gear engages, that's where it holds it. And uh, that, that was a little trickier, just getting everything to line up and getting it pushed on there, but I got it. You just keep wiggling and farting with it. The RTV sealant, I felt pretty good about it. Hindsight, I wish I would have snugged it and not tightened it and waited for that stuff to set up and then tighten it um, a few hours later or tomorrow. Um, adjusting the clutch. So a lot of people know about this little unit if you have one of these. You pop that little jam nut loose screw that screw in until it touches until it feels firm turn it backwards a quarter of a turn and then tighten up your jam nut I did that then I pulled on the clutch and it felt about right but when I pulled on the clutch it didn't relax all the way back to zero back to where I started There's this little spring here that pulls that lever down 
there's enough drag in the clutch cable, I guess, that it doesn't pull it all the way back down. So after I pulled on the clutch a little bit just to get the slop out of it, see where it wanted where it wanted to sit, basically readjusted that clutch with the jam nut and the screw. That seemed to help. Um, I think it's going to be just fine. We'll see if it leaks. Um, change the gasket, maybe change that cover if I feel like it, but I think I'm done. Next I'm going to work on brakes. Uh, they were squeaking the last week or so. I looked at them. One side's thin. They're not. We'll, we'll do a whole video about that. Alright, so I hope uh, anybody that's doing a clutch, you know, there's some good detailed videos out there, but sometimes I just like to point out odds and ends. I'm not an ex well, I'm an experienced mechanic, but I'm not a professional. I do a lot of my stuff myself, just trial and error. I figure if I screw something up, it saves me a few hundred dollars and and I can afford to do it twice and learn my lesson the hard way sometimes. Most of the time I'm successful, I would say 90% of the time. So good luck. Hope this helps somebody.